Well, Orini, the field is getting smaller and smaller by the day. Julianne Genta is the latest MP to publicly rule herself out of the running. It means right now, Green MP Tiano Tuiono is the only one publicly considering a run. And I can tell you that behind the scenes, the activist wing of the party is very much pushing for him to do just that. Uh, but that was only after their top two candidates, Chloe Swarbrick and Elizabeth Kitty Kitty, decided they weren't going to put their hand up this time round. One by one, all week, Green MPs have been publicly ruling themselves out of the running, but there is still one more name to watch. Jan Logie hasn't said anything all week. She still hasn't commented publicly since the vote at the AGM, and until she comes out and says it publicly, she is still one to watch. She could satisfy that activist wing of the party. She is from the left of the caucus, uh, and until she says anything about it publicly, well, you can't rule her out of this leadership race. All right, Connor, what are you hearing around Parliament, especially amongst your Green Party sources? Yeah, well, among the caucus and among their staffers here at Parliament, there was a state of shock last weekend when James Shaw wasn't re-elected at the AGM. Although one MP told me that they had heard whispers of the campaign against James Shaw ahead of that vote at the AGM, I asked them whether they were involved in that campaign. They told me, quote, absolutely not. Now, the delegates who voted against Shaw also say no one from caucus was involved. You can kind of see that in the fact that there isn't any challenger stepping forward. And the question is, if nobody does run against him, has Shaw done enough to silence his critics? We saw him this week admit that he hadn't got the balance right between being the Greens' co-leader and being a minister. I asked one of the delegates who voted against him whether they had seen enough from Shaw. They said they still haven't made up their mind. Connor, the Green Party leadership has been quite stable for several years. What suddenly happened? Well, this is two really influential, influential factions in the Green Party flexing their muscle. They are the Green Left Network and the Young Greens. They were instrumental in helping Marama Davidson get elected to the co-leadership in 2018, and they have been growing in influence ever since. They are from the far left radical side of the party. They see James Shaw as too close to the government, too afraid to criticise Labor and not doing enough on climate change. There are even some in the party who are considering whether they should rip up their agreement with Labor and walk away from government altogether. Now, that raises serious questions about stability going into an election in 2023. Labor will almost certainly need the Greens to govern next year, and you can bet that National and ACT will be asking serious questions about stability in 2023. OK, so what's the process from here? Well, nominations close on Thursday. There's still time for anyone to put their hand up until then. And don't rule out someone from outside of Parliament putting their hand up to run for co-leader. Russell Norman did that in 2006 and successfully won that contest then. The worst of all worlds for everyone is really if nobody runs against James Shaw in this next vote. For his critics, it means there's no chance for a change of direction. And for Shaw, there's no chance to beat out another candidate to really put these leadership questions to bed. Or any, if that happens, well, these leadership questions will probably still linger. And we could do all of this again in 2023. Mm.